ain't my bride. Let's go for a ride in my new fangled automobile. Just where we will go, nobody knows, but it's sure a great way to feel. Behind the wheel of the speed me to steal, it's my new fangled automobile. Hello and welcome to Vintage Car History. I'm Wild Bill. And so here's the question. Who invented the car? Well, that's not an easy question to answer, actually. For some four centuries, various people, you know, theorists, tinkerers, and engineers have designed and or constructed a variety of self-propelled vehicles. Wind power, clockworks, slaves on board pedaling the thing, early steam engines, even gunpowder have all been used to, or attempted to be used to provide motive power to a road going vehicle. So you have to carefully define what a car is in order to narrow that field. So if we define a car as a road going passenger vehicle with an internal combustion engine designed from the ground up to be specifically used as a passenger vehicle and then produce a quantity of them for general sale then the inventor would be Carl Benz. Benz was born in 1844 in Mulberg, Germany. His father Johann was a locomotive engineer. Benz took to engineering at a young age and was fascinated by internal combustion gas engines. After designing and building his own two-stroke gas engine for petrol, or for those, for those across the pond, you know, they call it petrol, gas, he designed improvements and by 1882 Hal held patents on many things we now take for granted, including the carburetor, the spark plug, the clutch, the radiator. Yeah, that was Benz. He was also quite keen on a new industry emerging at the time, the design and manufacture of bicycles. He moved to Mannheim and started a company, Benz and Company, or Benz and Z, in 1883 to produce and sell stationary engines, but Benz had an idea. He developed his own four-stroke engine and, using the current bicycle technology of the time, began to design a motor car. His first design, the Benz Patent Motor Wagon, hit the streets of Mannheim in 1885. The Little Beast was absolutely revolutionary. Never before had a gas-powered vehicle been designed from scratch to run on its own power and be able to carry multiple passengers. Due to this, Benz was granted a patent in 1886. It was powered by a four-stroke engine of 958 cc's, producing a little less than a, than a horsepower, about three-quarters of a horsepower. A two-speed gearbox brought power to the rear wheels through two chains. But he wasn't done yet, and neither was Bertha, his wife, for that matter. His first effort worked, but was hard to steer, and thus had a tendency to crash into things. The following year, he made another one that fixed many such issues, and in 1888, made his third and definitive model. It still looked much like the first, but had rack and pinion steering wooden wheels and opposed to the wire spoked ones, and a larger engine of 1600 cc's with more torque, though it was still only about three quarter horsepower. And after his wife got a hold of it, it would be changed even further. Here's what happened. Carl was an engineer, and engineers are not, as a general rule, known to be satisfied with their early designs, and thus Carl was reluctant to produce the car commercially. His wife, being a 19th century German woman, you know, the kind that will make breakfast, give birth, and then go plow a field or build a brick wall, was getting frustrated and had had enough of his indecision. So here's what she did. On a Sunday early morning, August 5th, 1888, she said to her sons, Eugen and Richard, Father is going, his father is busy today, and so we're going to visit your grandmama in Forsheim. The natural reply was, yes, Mama, we'll get the carriage and horses ready. But she said, no, we're taking the car. What? 
This was some 65 miles away, or 104 kilometers, you know, if you're that kind of person. I mean, no gas-powered car had ever traveled so far. Hell, there were only a handful of cars in the world at the time, so the concept was quite unthinkable, except for Bertha. She gathered her brood, fired the thing up, and trundled off on the cobblestone roads towards Forsheim. Now let me ask you, how many gas stations were in Germany in 1888? Well, if you guessed zero, you were spot on. <laughs> Here's another question. How many garages, you know, for repairing a car if there was a problem were sitting around in Germany in 1888? <laughs> you want to fathom another guess? <laughs> Obviously. No, so same guess is right, but gas could be had if you planned your route correctly. Druggists or apothecaries, for example, did offer gas or petrol as a cleaning agent at the time. So she stopped at the local drug stores to gas up the car. <laughs> also, it didn't do so well on the hills, but she did have two strapping young men to help push. And when going down the hills, um, she had the devil's own time trying to slow the thing down so that it wouldn't topple and create the first fatal traffic accident. But after many trials and even making some repairs and modifications to the car along the way, she and her sons made it by nightfall. It was the first road trip by car in world history and her modifications to the car are still in cars to this day. First, she told her husband afterwards to make a three-speed gearbox, you know, to include you know, a gear for hill climbing. And since she needed it to visit Granny, it is called the Granny Gear to this day. Also, braking was nothing more than <laughs> a wooden block pressed against the wheel, uh, it, you know, so, so what she did while on the trip is she went to a cobbler and uh, she, had, she had him go ahead and uh, mount some leather and attach it to the wood so that there would be some give and a little more grip to the braking, thus inventing the brake pad. So. <laughs> you know, my wife mentioned that such an invention was definitely a female thing. You know, the men make the iron, the women make it soft, safe, and comfortable. In order to maintain marital bliss, uh, Benz relented and began true production of the car. By 1893, 23 of them had been built. Meanwhile, Benz was working on his next models, the Victoria and the Comfort, I wonder who named that, eh? Which replaced the Motorwagen in the same year. Benz's Motor Works in Mannheim begun churning out cars, and under license were also built in France, where they were far more popular. Thus, Carl Benz became the first mass producer of cars in the world in history. We'll address that phase of his career and that of the Benz Company in another episode. So thanks for watching Vintage Car History. I'm Wild Bill. Peace.